Hello friends and welcome to our broadcast. My name is Larry Hutton and this is Limitless Life. Once again today we're going to be getting into the Word of God to hear the good news, the nearly too good to be true news is what some people think. that Can it be really that good or is this just makeup, is just fallacy? But it really is too good to be true in the natural realm, but it's coming from God who is in the supernatural realm. God wants you healthy. He wants you wealthy financially. He wants you free mentally and emotionally. He wants you blessed in every arena of life, which is why he came to the earth to redeem man from sin so that then every curse connected to sin would also be eradicated and done away with in our lives if we learn to receive his grace. For by grace, Ephesians 2, 8, for by grace are you saved through faith. God even gives us faith to receive his saving grace and that saving grace is, um, is uh, uh, how should I say this, it's appropriated in every area of our lives. In other words, it's, it's not just saved from sin grace, it's also saved from sickness grace and saved from poverty and lack grace. The Bible calls it the manifold grace of God. There's many aspects of God grace. After we get saved, we can still access more grace. Romans says that we have access by faith into the grace that we're standing in, right? And uh, Hebrews says, come boldly to the throne of grace that you may obtain mercy. That's written to Christians that have already received saving grace. So God has so much more for his children. And that's why he wants everybody saved. He wants everybody to be his children. God so loved the world that he gave us Jesus. And if we'll believe in Jesus and receive him as Lord and Savior. When, he, when, when you look up the word Lord, it means controller. And it doesn't just mean, okay, I want to control the spiritual aspect of your life. No, he wants to be controller of your emotions so that you don't have a let bad temper control you anymore. He shows you how to control your emotions with peace and joy, not bad temper. He doesn't want depression to control you anymore. He wants his peace and joy. But he also wants to control your finances. He's the one that made all the money in the earth, all the wealth in the earth, all the riches. And he knows where it's all at. He, he has more wisdom on how to get it into your hands than any financial guru on planet earth. So I mean, I'm telling you, when he wants to be Lord, he is not a, a uh, bad Lord, a bad ruler. He's not a, like I grew up in church thinking God was this big ogre up in heaven with a big baseball bat. Man, I'm going to smack you when you miss it, you know, or a lightning bolt. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this disease on you or I'm going to cause this accident to happen because you've been bad. That's not our God. James 1.17 says only good and perfect comes down from him. And he doesn't vary from that at all. Not even a hint or not even a shadow of turning away from good or perfect. If it's not good or perfect, it's not from God. That's the God we're talking about on this program. That's why we've called it Limitless Life, because with God, all the limits are taken off our lives. There is no limit. Man, you just keep, there's more and more and more and more of God, and more and more health, and more and more life, and more and more finances, and more and more peace and joy, and just more and more. He'll just keep adding more. That's why He is El Shaddai, the God who is more than. See, enough would be enough, but more than that, he just keeps adding, it just keeps piling it on. <laughs> Hallelujah. So let's get back into what we started last week. A week ago, we started a series I have entitled, What God Has Made You. God has made you things that you probably don't even know he's made you. In fact, he's made all of us things that we probably haven't realized he's made us or the impact of what he's done for us in our lives what God has made you. So this is going to be our sixth lesson today. And uh, we're just going to get back into to what God has made you. To me, uh, when I think of Christians and what they need to understand uh, before anything else, if they will understand the things that God has made them, they will mature quickly. They will partake of their inheritance. They will partake of the promises of God much quicker than those that have been Christians for 30, 40, 50 years, but have not learned who they are and what God has made them. 
So let's get back into what God has made you. Uh, we'll get it back into our foundation text here. But remember, one thing, the first thing that I talked about before we actually got into the list of what God has made you is that you're not a mistake. God didn't uh, think that you were an afterthought. Oh, you know, um, that person raped that person and now they're going to have a baby and oh man, I forgot about that baby. I, I need to do something about them. <laughs> no, uh -uh. when God saw you, in fact, we looked at the different verses last week about all the scriptures that show you that you were formed in the womb and that you were beautifully made. And, and so you're not an afterthought. You're not a mistake. God formed you and you're an important being and part of His body. When, you've, when you accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, you become part of His body and then you're one with Him. So let's get back to our foundation text in 1 John chapter 4, verse 17. We've been taking the latter part of the verse, as He is, so are we in this world. But let's just read the whole thing. Herein, this is 1 John 4, 17. Herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as He is, so are we in this world. As He is, so are we. As He is, so are we. So we talked about Genesis chapter 1, where we were created in His image and His likeness in His image and His likeness. Now that shows, us, that shows me one thing that I didn't talk about last week, but as He is, so are we in this world. If we're created in His image and His likeness, then that means we are beings with a free will that get, get to make choices. God didn't make us puppets. God's not a puppet that's made to do things. You and I aren't puppets. He's made us like Him as He is, so are we. And so we're not puppets. We're free will beings. We get to make choices. We can choose life. Remember Deuteronomy 30, 19, where God says, listen, I'm going to call heaven to pay attention to what I'm going to say and record this, and then I'm going to call earth to pay attention and record this, that I have set before you life and death. And then he puts blessing in with life, blessing and cursing. He puts cursing in with death. So life and blessing or death and cursing. I've set them before you. And then he says, choose life. He tells us which one to choose. But again, he says, it's still your choice. You have to choose it. In other words, God's saying, I can't choose it for you. I mean, I chose you as part of my family if you'll accept that but you have to choose. God can't make somebody get saved. He can't make somebody get healed. He can't make somebody get filled with the Spirit. He can't make somebody live in His peace and joy. He can't make somebody uh, live by faith. He can't make somebody walk in love. God can't make us do anything, and He doesn't want to. He made us like Himself. As He is, so are we. And then I thought of something else with that statement. As He is... So everything He is, so are we. We are everything He is. Boy, that's, that's just so foreign to most people's thinking. And yet, God's the one that makes the statement. And we looked at all the different verses last week, pr proving to us that we are eternal beings. We are spirit beings. We are actually God class of beings that God made us just a little lower in Himself. We looked at all those verses last week. <clears throat> in fact, according to James 1 verse 18, we were the first creation of God to be, able to be created like Him in His class of being. Man, that's powerful. So, we are, we're not going to go back over all of those scriptures and that that first thing we talked about that God has made you, but this is number one, if you're taking notes, want to write it down. Number one, you are a spirit. You are an eternal being. You have been created in His image and His likeness. He created you in His class of being, a God class of being. I'm talking right below Him. That's where you're at. You're above angel class of beings. You're right below the God, God Himself class of being. So, as He is, so are we in this world. And then the second thing that we were uh, discussing that God made us is that God has made you 
one of his immediate family members. You are a child of God. As the Bible says, you're an offspring of God Almighty. You are one of his very own sons or one of his very own daughters. That's amazing right there, just, just uh, that. Let's look at some more scriptures along that line and just, um, just build on this, that we are, we are God's family, immediate family, not extended family, immediate family with privileges of immediate family. <laughs> um, let's look at 2 Corinthians, what Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 6. He's actually talking in here in 2 Corinthians 6 where we're getting ready to read. He's talking about you and me being temples of God. In other words, God living in us and that we need to be different than the world or different than those that don't have God in them, different than unbelievers. And then in verses 17 and 18, he says this, 2 Corinthians 6, 17 and 18, Therefore, come out from among them and be separate, saith the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean, and I will receive you. I'm reading from the New King James. Verse 18, I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. I just want you to stop and, you know, the, the, the statement you'll hear some preachers say, see law. Sometimes I'll say that in a, I'll be in a service and I'll just say see law and then I'll just sit down in the front row facing the platform as, just like everybody else is, except I'm not up there now. And I'll just be sitting there and not say a thing after I say see law. Because I want people to think about, think about what was just stated. Think about it for a minute. Meditate on this. Get the understanding and revelation. This is phenomenal. Man, that I am a son. That I am a daughter. Man, when I was thinking about that, that hit me that, wait a minute, we're, we're not just talking a cliche here. We are saying that the creator of the universe is daddy. <laughs> the the all-knowing one is my daddy. The all-sufficient one is my daddy. The one who owns all the wealth and riches in the earth is my daddy. The great physician is my daddy. The, the, the prince of peace, as he is referred to in Isaiah, he is my daddy. And he's your daddy. Abba, Father, daddy, daddy. I think of my little girl, but when she was just a little girl, and how she'd say daddy, daddy. I remember running. I'd be at the office all day or maybe come in from a flight where Liz and Rachel didn't go with me, and, and uh, I'd walk in the house, and here she would come running. Daddy! And she'd jump up in my arms. Daddy. Daddy. Wow, what a term that is. And that just hit me this morning that that's our Father. That's our Lord. What He, every, as He is, so He's made us. And He's everything. He's made us part of Him. That, ju that just... Uh, overwhelmed me when I thought about it. Just amazing, amazing. This is my daddy. This is your daddy. And that, that alone starts giving you, when you get that understanding, that's why I say sea law, but that's why you get that understanding, you'll start thinking, wait a minute, I don't have anything to be worried about. Look who daddy is. You know, I mean, even a child of a wealthy dignitary or a wealthy person that's of the royal family, the child never has to think about having enough money, enough food to eat, enough clothing, enough anything. Why? Daddy will take care of it. Dad and mom will take care of it. You and I need to be thinking that way about daddy, father, father God. Wow. Look at um, Ephesians chapter 5 because saying what I just said would make you want to do Ephesians 5.1. So look at Ephesians 5.1. Uh, be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. Be followers of God 
as dear. I looked up that word dear and it means beloved. In fact, listen to Thayer. You know, Thayer has the Greek concordance. You can get it and look it up yourself. But listen to what, <clears throat> what God says about the word beloved. You and I are beloved, or somebody pronounce it beloved, however you want to pronounce it. But the word Thayer, or the uh, Greek word used here according to Thayer is beloved, esteemed, dear, favorite, worthy of love. See, so many people don't think they're worthy of love. But as dear children, we are the beloved. You are esteemed in God's eyes. You are dear to Him. You're His favorite. You know, people will hear me say when, when they come to my services and then I'm preaching along and, I, and I'll say, man, I am God's favorite. And they'll think, well, I heard Jerry Savelle say that. I'm God's. I heard Jesse DePlanta say I'm, And now Brother Larry has the gall to say he's God's favorite. Well, you ought to be saying the same thing because it is written, you are God's favorite. But how can we all be God's favorite? Because we're in Him and we're all one body in Christ. <laughs> Glory to God. We are, according to Ephesians 5, 1, the beloved. Now let's go back to Ephesians chapter 1, with us chapter 5, and let's look at verses, oh, where do I want to start? Verses 3 through 6 here. Look at this. Blessed, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has, notice the past tense, not is going to, but who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, according as He has, past tense, chosen us in Him, in other words, to be part of Him and be uh, in Jesus, chosen us to be in Him before He even created the foundation of the world. Wow. That we should be holy, and without blame before Him in love, having predestinated us in, uh, unto the adoption of children. Remember we talked last week, we've been adopted and, and we're just as much, much a part of the family as the Jewish who were not adopted uh, part of the family. They were part of the family. If they accept Jesus, we accept Jesus as Gentiles. Even though we're not Jew, then all of us become one in Him. Of course you do. Whether you're Jew or Gentile, you still have to call on the name of Jesus or you're not saved. Just because you're Jewish doesn't mean you're saved. Uh, um, and if you're a Gentile, you have to call on Jesus to be saved. So either one. Having predestinated us into the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to Himself, according to the good pleasure of His will, to the praise of the glory of His grace, this is what I wanted you to see, wherein He has made us accepted in the Beloved. Remember, we just looked at Ephesians 1, be followers of God as dear children. Remember, we found out that word dear is beloved. This word beloved is actually the Greek word agapeo. Listen to the four. I want you to hear this. This is so good when I was studying this. The four things that Thayer gives as definitions, and then I'm going to address each one, elaborate on each one. So here's the fourth definitions when, when it says, He has made us accepted in the beloved. We are now in the beloved. So here's what the four things that Thayer's Greek uh, lexicon says as definitions. To welcome. To entertain. To be fond of and to love dearly. So let me take those four things, to welcome, to entertain, to be fond of, and to love dearly, and let me just uh, elaborate on them. To welcome. You know what? To welcome would, uh, would imply uh, someone who welcomes you into their home, and man, they're just so glad you're here. They make you feel welcomed. I'm sure if you've been like me, you've been to places where you didn't feel welcomed. But when you go into a place and they make you feel welcomed, I mean, it's just, it just, it's special. It just makes you feel really special because you have been welcomed. The next definition, to entertain. That speaks of someone who wants to spend time with you. In fact, they want to 
do things, entertain. They want to do things for you. Wow. And then to be fond of is the third thing. To be fond of, that speaks of someone that really, really likes you. I mean, they like you a lot. They cherish their relationship with you. And you can tell when somebody cherishes your relationship and they're fond of you. You can tell in the natural, and that's what God is to you. And then the fourth definition of the word beloved, to love dearly. This speaks of someone who loves you no matter what you do. And, and, and even they would even lay down their lives for you. That's what... That's what it's talking about when God calls you the beloved. Wow. He esteems you. He, he says, you're my favorite and you have been made worthy of my love. That's what God's talking about to you, what he's made you. you. You do know God has made you worthy, right? You know, there may be some watching and... And maybe you feel, yeah, but I just have done so much wrong and I don't feel worthy. Let me, let me talk about that for a minute because sometimes people have heard even over in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, they've heard a verse stated there that's made them feel that they're not worthy. Uh, so I'm going to turn over there real quick and let me just show you 1 Corinthians 11 verse 27. And look, this is where Paul was actually talking about taking communion. Remember, he said, as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. He was quoting Jesus. And so Jesus said, you know, you, when you partake of the bread, it's like you're uh, remember, it's my body that was broken for you when you partake of the cup. Remember, my blood was shed for you. Anyway, he gets to verse 27. Uh, 1 Corinthians eleven twenty seven. 27, whoever uh, shall eat of this bread and drink of this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. So people have taken that and they thought it was saying, if you're unworthy, you're going to be guilty. And that is not what the word here unworthily means. It doesn't mean unworthy. Actually, if you look it up, don't take my word for it. Just get out Strong's Concordance or Thayer's, whatever else. You'll find out the word unworthily is actually talking about the manner in which you're receiving those elements. Or we could say it this way, irreverently. In fact, that's one of the definitions in the Greek, irreverently. So uh, in other words, it's not talking about whether you and I are not worthy or we are worthy. It's actually saying, don't take this lightly. This is a serious matter. Jesus' blood was sacrificed for you, and his, or, or his body was sacrificed for you, and his blood was shed for you. So take this seriously. And he said you're doing it in remembrance, so that sounds like a holy thing to me. So um, just understand that God has made you worthy. If you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, He has made you worthy. Look at Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews 10, 19. It says, Having boldness to enter into the holiest, which talking about the holiest, you're just talking about God's presence, being able to come before the presence of God, uh, having boldness to enter. So that boldness is confidence, assurance. He's not mad at you. Just like daddy, he's daddy, he's father. Just like a child can run up into daddy's arms, has confidence and boldness. Having boldness to enter into the holiest by, here's why we can have this assurance, this confidence, this boldness, by the blood of Jesus. Well, listen, you could not enter God's presence if you weren't worthy. Nobody that's unworthy could come before the presence of God. You would have to be worthy. And the blood has made you worthy. Hebrews 9, 12, By His own blood He entered in once into the holy place, having obtained an eternal redemption for us. 
He used his blood to pay the wages of sin. Remember what the wages of sin is? The wages of sin is death. So blood was spilled, Jesus' blood, to pay for death. So we are now redeemed from sin, which means we're redeemed from spiritual death separation from God, which put us back into the state of existence like Adam. Before sin, Adam walked with God. Why? He was worthy. After sin, he wasn't worthy. You and I have been freed from sin by the blood of Jesus, so we are made worthy. Colossians 1.14 says, We have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Wow. Man, I'll tell you what, that's powerful. That is so powerful. So I'll tell you what, we're out of time, so we're going to pick back up here next lesson. Every lesson could stand alone in a lesson that could build you up, edify you, recharge you, I mean, relight your fire, you know, and yet everyone is just going to keep fitting together and keep just solidifying what God has made you so you can be all that God's made you to be. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. Make sure you share this on social media, every other way you can share these uh, teachings so other people have the same opportunity you have to be blessed and change. And then partner with us. I know some of you are. Thank you for partnering. You partners are helping us reach other people that are watching and haven't yet partnered. So thank you for doing that. See you next time. Have a Jesus-filled day. If you would like to schedule Larry Hutton to speak at your church, event, or conference, Go to LarryHutton.org and choose Contact Us from the menu bar or call 1-888-887-WORD. Jesus paid an incredible price for us when he laid down his life, took on our sin, died on the cross, and descended into hell. But then he was raised up again in glory so all who believe on him could become just like him walking in love, joy, and peace, doing His mighty works, winning souls, and making disciples. The world constantly tries to limit you, but you need not go through life believing that you are what circumstances, background, or failures have forced you to be. Who does God say He has made you to be? What does God say He has given you? What does God say you were able to do? Larry Hutton goes to the Bible to reveal all that God has done so you will be able to fulfill your divine purpose and destiny on the earth. In Christ, you have all things to build you up into the believer that God designed you to be. To order, he was, I am. Go to LarryHutton.org or call 888-887-WORD. Join us again for Limitless Life with Dr. Larry Hutton where you'll get practical teaching from God's Word that you can apply to your everyday life. Go to LarryHutton.org to watch this program and many others. You'll find special offers and resources to help you thrive in life. You can check on Larry and Liz's schedule and join them at a meeting near you. That's LarryHutton.org, or you can call 888-887-WORD.